Hello, peacemakers. Zen of Cars here. So as some of you may know, if you follow my TikTok, I used to have a 1990 Acura Integra GS sedan. It was a great car. It had 230,000 miles on it. It had the high revving 1.8. It was a five-speed manual, independent suspension all around, double wishbone in the front. It was a great, great car, but it was showing its age. I couldn't keep up with it and I couldn't keep taking care of it over time. So eventually I decided to sell it and you won't believe what I got for it. A guy offered me a trade, which I initially thought was actually a little bit too good to be true until I looked at the car and we went through the process of getting it and it all worked out that he really wanted the Integra for his brother. And well, here we are with that. This is a 2004 GMC Envoy XUV. It is one of the most unusual vehicles ever made. Right alongside vehicles like the Chevrolet SSR and Pontiac Aztec, this truck-like SUV pushed the boundaries of technology rarely touched with modern cars. So I was actually open to trades for the Integra, and I was actually looking for a Blazer. And when this came up as an offer for a trade, I was like, really? What an unusual vehicle to be owning. Now, the reason I was actually looking for like a trailblazer or a blazer was I wanted a, not a full size SUV, but I wanted an SUV where I could prop the hatch glass and set up a camera so I could have a camera chase vehicle. And when this came up, I actually had to do a bit of a double take because I sat here thinking, that's not a bad vehicle to use because it's got a truck bed with a wind down window instead of a propped up window. And there was one thing that this has that a lot of the vehicles that I was looking at don't, and that is that these came with a V8. Now these came with the standard issue iron block overhead valve 5.3 liter V8 producing roughly 300 horsepower and roughly the same number in torque. Now this Envoy is a 2004, which means that this engine design is actually a little bit improved over the original GMT 800 trucks. Now the 2000 to 2002 trucks had knock sensors inside the valley of the motor. So it meant if you had a knock sensor code, you needed to replace the knock sensor. You'd be replacing the knock sensor harness of both knock sensors and you'd be replacing intake gaskets because you have to remove the intake plenum in order to get to those knock sensors. As for the body on this truck, it is surprisingly straight for 232,000 miles. However, it is not perfect. There are dents and scratches. It has been clearly sideswiped and I'm currently running the spare wheel on the right front. But for the volume of the car alone, compared to the Integra, I got a better deal. Now you may be saying to yourself, Zen, you are mad. Why did you get an XUV? It is probably one of the most unreliable vehicles GM ever made. But when you hear people say that, it's probably not where you think. The engine and drivetrain in these vehicles is not actually the unreliable part. Because they are the 5.3 and the 4L60E, they are actually a pretty bulletproof pairing of transmission and engine, assuming they've been regularly taken care of. Now this truck, the, trend, the engine has been replaced at one point in its life and it's pretty healthy. It feels like a very new LS. It was probably done about 50, 60,000 miles ago. No real history on it, but it is a very healthy engine. It's not consuming oil, it's not consuming coolant. The transmission does 4L60 things, so it kind of hunts for gears a little bit. And I can't quite tell if it's slipping or not, but not the end of the world. Now, the part of the Envoy XUV that is unreliable is naturally all of the things that make it an XUV. If you do not know anything about these XUVs, let me show you. There is a window inside this tailgate that moves up and down. At the moment, this window motor is actually broken, which is not the end of the world because this is a truck bed. This whole area is plastic lined and it is designed to be a completely separated truck bed from the cabin. Also notice it is missing a rear wiper right now. Now what's interesting about these XUVs is they actually have a rear tailgate. If I drop this, it is a tailgate. You can tailgate with it. You can use it as an extension. There is a rod here that allows you to extend the capacity of the bed. Now this tailgate is supposed to be double hinged just like a Honda Ridgeline, but the button for the hinging action on this side is actually broken, so that will need to be replaced. So this is the whole spare tire situation. This is the original wheel that's supposed to be on the left right front, but as you can see, due to some tire wear damage uh, from worn out tie rods, this wheel is currently undrivable at the moment. So you may be thinking to yourself, well Zen, it's kind of like an avalanche. It's got a truck bed and kind of an SUV body but I don't think you've seen an avalanche 
do this. Now, shockingly, the most expensive part of this XUV affair works. It is not broken. The motor tracks for the sliding roof do actually work. Now, General Motors marketed this whole sliding roof thing so that you could stand tall things up above the vehicle, like plants or dressers or clocks or refrigerators, tall things that would normally not fit in the cabin and would be too long with the tailgate down and the mid-gate dropped. And yes, I did say mid-gate. The other fascinating part about these Envoy XUVs is this button here, which if you look closely, rolls down the middle window. And what you do is you start on the passenger side of the vehicle, you fold this seat down and then flip it up like that. You go to the driver's side, you fold this seat like this, fold it up like that, and then you press this button. Latches release, and we have a little five foot truck bed. So now I've converted my five passenger SUV into a truck bed. And with the combination of the tailgate being able to drop, you have nearly eight feet of bed space that you can use while it all being inside the vehicle. With the adjustment rod, you can prop the tailgate up at an angle so that whatever is in the back of it will not fall out because the tailgate is propped up a little bit. And look at all this space that you have access to now. I am standing inside the SUV because the roof slides and I'm still in the vehicle. I'm standing in the bed. This area can be fully enclosed. Or you can turn this into a giant camper. With the middle partition folded down and this here, you could actually sleep back here and this could be a pretty neat camping rig. Especially considering this tailgate swings sideways like a Honda Ridgeline. So there's no awkward dance of you having to wind the window down and fold the tailgate down. And when the tailgate is open, you can just simply step on the bumper and climb up inside the thing. To complete the best part of the XUV is you have little tabs here for the seat belts, which allow you to flip the partition back up without snagging the seat belts. And it's extremely easy to put everything back down. The other thing that's nice is behind these rear seats, there's a decent amount of storage space back there. So you can store, you know, little storage things you need for roadside repair, like a jump pack or a little set of tools, or you can store guns back here and go shooting with it and carry all of your passengers in good comfort. Now, it is well documented that I like second gen Dodges. I have a 95, I have a 99. The 99 is an extended cab with the crew cab doors and the 95 is a single cab. I take both of those vehicles shooting pretty regularly and it's nice to be able to store rifles behind the seats and actually carry stuff. Now, it's capable in the single cab, but it's pretty tight when it comes down to needing to store all the guns, all the armor and all the gear. Your passenger is going to be sitting with some stuff in their lap. Now, this is perfectly fine in the extended cab truck because you can flip the back seat up, you can set the guns in there, you can set the ammo in there, or you can just lay the guns on the back seat. But the problem we run into is you can only carry one other passenger. Someone else has to ride along in another vehicle or in the back with all the gear. And trust me, a full-size adult in the back seat of a second-gen Dodge extended cab sucks. I have three nieces that I carry in that truck regularly. They are uncomfortable driving behind me in the truck. But that is the beauty of the Envoy XUV. You have all this practicality, but you have more space than a truck provides. And there is one other thing. This has two wheel drive, all wheel drive, and four high and four low, which means it can go on a pretty ruddy gravel path and it can go in the snow and perform quite well. This tailgate is a great platform to store stuff. This is a really weird vehicle. It's extremely ugly, by the way. It is not a very pretty vehicle. It's in good shape for what it is. 
but it is ugly. I will not deny that. It's kind of like an avalanche and an Aztec had a baby. And this one's autistic. It does suit my lifestyle very well. And let's show you some really, really cool features really quick. This vehicle is air suspension. It has heated seats, memory functions, an easy back driver seat. It has fog lights. It has automatic headlights. It has wiper washers. It has cruise control, rain sensing windshield wipers, pedal adjustment. It has steering wheel controls for volume, voice activation program. You have all your driver settings and personalization settings in the gauge cluster. You also have three zone climate control that's automatic. On top of that, we have OnStar accessibility. We also have an auto dimming rearview mirror, which works extremely well. The buttons for controlling the roof and the windows, and you even have garage door openers. It has a heated front windshield. The rear wiper controls a rear heated windshield. And backseat passengers have their own climate control and audio settings. So there's a lot of awesome stuff on this vehicle that makes it really practical and really nice to use as a daily driver. But it's a vehicle I got on a trade for a car that I bought for $700. So naturally there are things wrong with it. The shocks are a little bit blown. Currently rocking a spare tire. As we noted, this motor doesn't work. This is broken. The mirrors do this when you enter your driver settings. They also do the same when you want to use the curb view assist. The front washers don't spray very well. And let's not forget to mention the very suspect amp wiring job. That needs to be fixed. There's a dent there. These are foggy. It has a very gnarly exhaust leak. And a check engine light. Now, these issues are very easy to fix. I can get struts. I can get that wheel swapped. I can get the exhaust leak fixed. That's not a major deal. I can find a window motor that is compatible for that rear window. The most expensive parts work and they work extremely well and they're very good to use. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna use this vehicle, as I said, as a camera chase vehicle. In the summer, I'm going to round up a couple of people I know with exotic cars and do films on their cars while using this as the chase vehicle. And that's where the V8 comes in because this thing moves. It is really, really quick for what it is. Odd enough to say it is probably the quickest car I have owned and probably the most powerful car I've ever owned. It's very practical for holding camera gear. It's very practical for holding stuff. And that trunk is a very, very good place to mount a camera. There are mounting points all over the bed. So that means I can strap a camera back here, have it protected by the roof and shoot from the back of the car. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bit of a long-term review of this thing to see how well it stacks up. How efficient is it? What is the insurance cost? You know, how reliable is it? Simply because there aren't a lot of these on the road. There's still a lot of people who I know who are big car people who have no idea what this is. I go to Cars and Coffee and I show them the roof and their jaws just drop. So with that, we'll be doing quarterly updates on how well Envoy XUV life is. And if you would like to see those quarterly updates, please subscribe, please like, please share, please comment. Ask what you would like us to do with this vehicle. What would you like us to upgrade? What would you like us to change? Should I put an exhaust on it? Should I put headers on it? Should I put Escalade wheels on it? Should I put different lights? Should I change the interior to a Denali interior? Please let me know. And I might actually enter you guys in a competition to allow you guys to vote for whatever thing we want to do to this. But with that, if you want to see more content between now and then, please subscribe to my TikTok. Please subscribe to my Instagram. That's where I'm going to be doing the majority of the posting on this vehicle. So with that, thank you for watching. If you want me to do more in-depth videos on the Envoy XUV beyond the quarterly updates we're going to do, please let me know in the comments and please let me know what you want to learn more about. I might even make a TikTok about it just for you. Thank you for watching. I'm Zen of Cars. Thank you for being a peacemaker.